Welcome everybody on Zoom. Welcome everybody in the lecture hall. Welcome everybody from the future. Today we are going to first finish what we started last week, and then we'll move on with uh, a new topic, a new week. So if you remember what we did, we talked about languages and how complicated it is to actually uh, pre-process the whole data in order to create the index and in order to return meaningful results. Um, and uh, I showed you also the skip pointers, which is a magical way of uh, being faster if you want to intersect or union uh, posting lists that might be a very large one and a very small one and so on. So you can very quickly skip to uh, to uh, uh, to um, higher values uh, if you know that none will match. And then I was left with this last topic, which is where we stopped last time, which is phrase search. Um, there are many different kinds of search engines. Um, in the modern, and I mean here, computerized information retrieval, for several decades, maybe starting with the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, um, the whole uh, area was dominated by Boolean search. So there was a lot of software uh, where you would just type uh, words and with and, with or, with not, um, and uh, and then you would have uh, precise uh, precise results. It was popular uh, in libraries, but maybe more for searching the metadata, as I explained to you, not full text, but the, the author, the title, a few keywords, and so on. But one area in which this was extremely useful and popular is law. The, the lawyers who had to search for uh, uh, constitution, law, uh, jurisprudence, and so on, decrees, and then it's a full text search work, right? You want to find preced precedents or uh, texts that are relevant to your case. Um, and so there were there were uh, software companies that developed information retrieval engines specifically for these customers. And uh, it became actually quite evolved. I mean, not just and or not, but many other operators like proximity and so on in order to uh, to enable this search. But there is a few problems with Boolean information retrieval systems. And one of the problems that we hear the most is that either you're going to write a query that returns no results at all, because you were too specific, or you are going to write a query that returns too many results. And it's very, very, very difficult with these systems to be in the sweet spot in the middle, to have just a few documents that are relevant to what you're uh, looking for, your information need. So it means that while it works, and this is what we could implement at the time, um, there has to be a better way to uh, to uh, to do information retrieval. And of course, there were new ways that were invented later, and uh, you probably noticed when you do a search uh, under Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo and the like, uh, you are not typing a Boolean search. You're just typing some texts, uh, sometimes even sentences. And uh, you would expect when you type a sentence, for example, you have a bug, you have an error message, what do you do? You type it on our Google to see if anybody else had that same error message, right? But then you really want the words to appear in that order, right? So you see that in that case, this set of words setting that we had where we just look at whether a word belongs to a document or not, that's not enough anymore. Now we need the order. We need to know in what order the terms appear and that they appear exactly in that order. Um, this is what we call phrase search. And think of the case if you want to force it in Google where you put double quotes around uh, what you're looking for and that kinds of forces a phrase search. Um, so this is what happens when you type ETH Zurich, for example, it's not just looking for documents that have ETH and that have Zurich, but it actually does some internal cooking. It's, uh, it has evolved over time, but tries to find uh, uh, documents where it's collocated. Because apart from that, you could imagine, I don't know, an Ethereum community based in Zurich, right? Crypto community, it, it could be something else, right? ETH also means extended uh, trading hours on a stock exchange, so you might have other things, but ETH Zurich, that's uh, that's specific. If you want to force, because in some cases, the, you're not happy enough with, the, uh, with, with what it does, you can force it with the double quotes like this. This is called phrase search. And... The question now is how do we implement phrase search? Can we use the standard inverted index that we saw last time? And if you think of it, the answer is no, we cannot. Why? Because we only assumed sets of words. We dropped completely the order of the words. So we no longer have this information. If I tell you this, 
All I can know is, for example, that document one contains ETH and Zurich, document eight contains ETH and Zurich, document three contains Zurich, but not ETH. Does, does document one contain ETH and right after ETH, Zurich? I don't know. I have no idea because this index here lost information and I, I don't know. So we need to find a way to modify or tweak that index in such a way that it's going to be aware of the proximity and the succession of the worlds. And one of the tricks, there's two tricks really, but the first trick is to use what is called the byword index, more generally a K-word index. And that means that instead of indexing single terms, single words, you're going to have a sliding window of K terms when you, when you go over the document and you are going to index the windows instead. So in, if it's a byword index, two words at a time. So for example, imagine that I have this web page. It's, a, it's an actual one, I think, help ETH Zurich to flexibly react to new challenges and to set new accents in the future. Um, what happens is that we have this sliding window of two words, and uh, you can see it with the underline that I put right there, here, and we index help ETH as if it were a term. Previously, it was a single term, and now I put all of the documents idea, IDs that uh, contain help ETH, one after the other. And that might be the one, right? And there's other documents. And then I, that's a sliding window, so I move there, you know, ETH Zurich, Zurich 2, to flexibly, flexibly React, React 2, and so on. And I basically have this document for all of these pairs right here. This is called a byword index. Same structure, but we have now pairs of terms instead of single terms. Me? Who is not with me? Okay, majority. So now, if I'm looking for uh, a, a query that is in the form of a phrase, imagine there's just two words, then I'm going to look up ETH Zurich in there, and then as we did with terms, I'm going to go through the posting list and return these results. Now it's easy because the query has two, two terms in that case. What if the query is longer? I have a phrase, it's in quotes, and I have a query. But all I have is a byword index, right? What I pre-computed in advance, the index, is based on pairs of words, bywords. So you might think in order to uh, find the end query on pairs of terms, so I want to find documents that have help ETH, ETH Zurich, Zurich 2, to flexibly, flexibly react, right? And then I'm going to go through the posting lists corresponding to them. It's an end, so that's an intersection. And then I'm going to find documents that contain all of these pairs. Two questions. Can there be false positives? Who thinks yes? I see a few nodding heads. Yes. Who thinks there can be false negatives? I see no nodding heads. And indeed, you can have false positives, but no false negatives. What that means is that if you do this, you're guaranteed to, to recall, the keyword would be recall, but to retrieve all the documents that have that sentence. But you might have a few extra. You might have too many of them. Right? So it's, uh, it means, for example, imagine that I have this other, uh, 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 this other uh, document, help ETH Zurich to introduce techniques to flex react and so on. Now I have a false positive because you can see that all the pairs are in there. So that's returned by my query when I uh, use the, the, the index, but it's a false positive because it doesn't actually contain the sentence I'm looking for. So what do you do? You can use this and then you do what's called post-processing, post-filtering. So you go then to the, to the documents that you've uh, isolated and then you filter a bit more to, to look specifically for that sentence. Right? So the index was helpful because it accelerated the whole thing, but there's still a bit of work to do to eliminate the false positives. Okay? Um, now, how do you think? That's the, the clicker question I wanted to ask you, but let me ask it like this. Who has an idea on how we can diminish the number of uh, false positives? Anybody on Zoom? 
No ideas? Anybody? Yes, go ahead. The microphone, maybe. Over there. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yes. That's because there is a white noise. So if we if we don't do this, we don't hear you. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, with proximity? With, sorry? Uh, proximity. Proximity. Um, can you elaborate? Uh, like how close the words are together, like uh, to to find out if there is something in between the words. Yes. So what information would you need, for example, in order to establish proximity? What additional information? I mean, you could uh, choose the first word and the last word, mm -hmm. and then see if the distance between the two words is as long as the sentence you typed in. Yes. So the interesting keyword that you say is basically distance, right? You, you would need to have some distance information between the location of the words. So what could you then add in an index to be able to calculate that distance in order to be able to calculate? Uh, just the position of the word. The positions, yes, exactly. So this is indeed correct. So I'm going to, uh, and I jump a few slides, pretend you didn't see that. Yes, jumping here. This is called the positional index. So this is probably what you're suggesting. So what we do is we extend the index here in the postings. We have the document ID. As a so document C, for example, and now we have the po the positions uh, at which uh, at which it appears. So it means uh, so this is still the, the the term frequency. We can have also the number of terms of times that it appears. Then the positions. This is called the positional posting, and the idea is that you remember what I told you about postings: non-positional posting, positional postings. In the Boolean queries, we assumed set of word semantics. So we had non-positional postings. A posting tells you, yes, the term is in the document, but you don't know where. In a positional posting, you not only know that the term is in the document, you also know at what position, position one, position 10, and so on. And this in turn allows you to calculate the distances and to establish the proximity, because now you, you know it's at this position, at this position, you can know if it's a succession of each other and so on. So for example, here you see ETH Zurich, you see here, you detect in the index, you're looking for this sentence and you see one, two, three, four, five, six. So now you see exactly in which order it is, right? So this is the positional index, the name of that. That's what you wanted to suggest, right? Uh, yeah, more. Yeah, okay. Uh, so yes, this is one solution. Anybody has another idea? There is another way of doing that. Yes, go ahead, maybe the microphone. Could you re uh, convert the return documents into sets? And then you could uh, take like the sets of the smallest size and return those because the other sets will just have uh, extra words in, in them that's uh, causing. Sets uh, of uh, terms, sets of documents. Sets of terms. Sets of terms. Um, instead of lists. Yes. Uh, I would have to think about this. This is. Uh, it might be that there's even more more ways of of doing it. Um, so you would basically replace the pair of terms with sets of terms. Always two terms or any number of terms. Always two terms. Always two terms. Um, do you think it's going to impact the false positives? I think it's going to impact the false positives because the documents with false positives will have extra terms in them and therefore the sets will be larger. So the set of uh, the set of terms of the set of uh, of documents would be larger. The set of terms. The set of terms. So you would for go each. for larger sets of terms. Yes. For each document, you calculate the set of terms. Yeah. And then uh, those documents with the smallest set of terms, those are the correct ones, and there are just excess false positives. Ah, so it means that you consider the size of the documents. The size of the set of terms that belongs to a document. So let me see if this has to do with uh, having larger sets of terms here, if this is kind of the direction in which you are going. Yes. Yes, okay. So indeed, what we can do is extend, so this is a parameter by word index, so two, two words. We can extend it to uh, more, 
three three word index, quadri word index, k word index. And indeed, what we can do is uh, we can have a sliding window of a larger size, three, 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 and build an index like that. Right. Indeed. So this is the second solution. So there is the positional postings, positional index, and uh, and uh, k word indices. Uh, we can even go to four. You see. Um, and then, indeed, uh, you are going to uh, to um, uh, then filter this out because if you have the larger window here, you see Zurich to introduce, and you see that here it's uh, not going to appear in the query results because of the larger window. Right? All right. But there is, of course, an inconvenience, a drawback to this technique, is that if you have larger windows, the number of um, possible lists of terms that you get grows exponentially. Right, so you have, uh, uh, if you have pairs, then that's the number of uh, the number of terms squared, then cubic, quadratic, and so on. So you basically have enormous numbers of postings lists in there, right? Compared to just single terms. Who sees that? Right, it's just the combination. So you can imagine that if you if you start going to five or six, there are so many of them that you can probably not even store the index uh, anymore. All right, so two solutions, the positional index uh, and the, by the, the K word indices. These are the two ways of implementing the, uh, the phrase search, right? Positional index I already talked about, positional posting with the positions in there. And you see, for example, if you're looking for ETH Zurich, you see here you have a document C um, where ETH is at position two and Zurich at position three. So here you can, you know that ETH is followed by Zurich and that's fine, all right? Now, just again, to be very clear of what, what we have in there, the information we have in these rectangles is the document ID, the, what is called the term frequency, I'll come back to that in a few weeks. So it means that here we have one occurrence of ETH at that position. So this is the count of the number of positions we have here, just like we have the document frequency here, that is the count of document IDs that we have here. Who is with me? Yeah, all right, everybody, awesome. So I'm done with this chapter. Uh, this is week three, this corresponds to chapter two of the uh, book, and uh, you should read it. The term vocabulary and posting list. That's the that's the name of the of the chapter. It's more or less what I'm telling you. There might be a few more details also in the book that you should look at. And uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Any questions? No questions. Who understood this part? Who would be able to implement a by word index? Okay, who would be able to implement a positional index? All right. And by implementing, I mean to build it out of a collection of uh, books and uh, to, to um, evaluate a query. I give you a query. You can use the index in order to, uh, to extract the results. Okay. All right. Oh, we have a question on Zoom. Yes. Can you briefly, can you please briefly explain, uh, briefly mention the inconvenience part again? The inconvenience part, oh yes, of the of the, the K word indices when we increase K, all right. So imagine that I have, I'm gonna take a round number, let's say a hundred, no, let me take a million. Uh, imagine you have a million distinct terms, 10 to the power of six. If now you go to by word indices and have pairs of terms, how many pairs of terms are you going to have potentially? I'm not saying they will all appear, but if you have a million possible terms, how many pairs of terms will you have ordered? I see no raise hands, maybe on Zoom. 500,000. Uh, so 500,000, that, that's actually where my million came from. So 500,000. It's basically the, uh, the the typical number of terms that you can have in a collection, but here I just rounded it to a, to a million because I didn't want to uh, to uh, to to complicate the math too much. So if I have a million terms, how many pairs can I have? It's combinatorics. I don't see nobody. Yes, over there. 
about? A million squared, exactly. So that's 10 to the power of 12. That is a trillion, right? So it would, it's a trillion different terms. Uh, and if we have now uh, three, so three world index, 10 to the power of, let's say it all at the same time, 10 to the power of 18. Yes, exactly. I knew you knew it. All right. So you see, 10 to the power of 18, we are talking about a quinty. Um, no, that's not trillion. Uh, even I have trouble counting with so many zeros. So a trillion, quadrillion, a quintillion. That's a quintillion. Um, that's weird. Normally a quintillion, that's five. Normally there's an offset of one. Uh, trillion, trillion is 12. No, no, it is, it is quintillion, 18. So uh, you see, this is just not practical. The, the explosion that you get in there in terms of the of the number of posting this you are going to get is uh, is too much. Does it answer your question uh, on Zoom? Yes. yes. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions? Are we all done? Yes. Go ahead. The microphone is right there. Can we turn the white noise off? Oh yes. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. There you go. It's off. All right, but you can no longer speak then. Okay, so I'll switch off the...